Coming up, we got another episode of Real Buzz Takes. Cannabis Keenan is in studio, and we will be t- and we will be talking about none other than Wes Craven's A Nightmare on Elm Street. Run the theme. Did that seem slower than normal? Or am I crazy? I think you might it might be crazy. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Who knows? I, I didn't notice well, if it was. Welcome to another edition of Real Buzz Takes. We are the Real Buzz crew. I am Real, Real Buzz, Buzz 2, dude. Oh, I'm, you're right. The Real Buzz 2. I'll get used to that. I'm Real <laughs> Buzz Rob. There's no way for a man to die. Yeah, you're right, Ed. A parachute not opening. That's a way to die. Getting caught in the gears of a combine. Having your nuts bit off by a Laplander. That's the way I want to go. <laughs> <laughs> Having my nuts bit off by a Laplander. That's how I want to go. That that scream at the end is fitting for this movie, I guess, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's that's what I, internally what my mind did. Like, during oh. this movie? No, 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 during oh. what he just said. Like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. And to my left, we have Keenan, a.k.a. Keenan the Campbell, a.k.a. Cannabis Keenan, a.k.a. Keenan the Barbarian, Keenan Robertson. Nice beaver. Thank you. I just had it stuffed. <laughs> that's a good one. That's that was funny, good one. Right? Yeah, yeah, I, I like, like that. that one. Yeah, that's good. And uh, as I Hello, mentioned. everybody. Hello. Hello. And as I mentioned before today, the movie we are reviewing is the original A Nightmare on Elm Street. Nightmare. I, nightmare. I do that. <laughs> and I mentioned that it fucking sound like Burt Kreischer. He says, Mere. Nightmare. It's a nightmare. It, it reminds me of that uh, Lil Wayne, or Kanye West song from 808s and Heartbreaks with... Uh, See you in my nightmare? Yeah, see you in my nightmares. And he's like, see you in my nightmares. You remember that? No, I do. That's, I mean. That's Wheezy F, baby. Watch out. That's also a world-class impression of Kanye using uh, autotune. No, I was trying to do Wheezy F at that point. Oh, yeah. yeah, That makes more sense now. Okay. my nightmares. He just kind of, he just kind of. It was like mumble rapping through that part before mumble rapping was a thing. You know? I think we can all agree that there's a really fine line between like good Lil Wayne and just he's going to Lil Wayne. Well, and especially during those days when he was still double cupping. Oh, because he, he was at the top of his game and like he thought he could do no wrong. He started yeah. making rock albums and they're like, Wheezy, <laughs> yeah. what the fuck? Got my promethazine in two cups. I'm going to screw up. See, but that was when he was good. Well, right yeah, that was, that was back when, um, and I kind of. It's funny you mention this because I was on TikTok today. I know I'm a 31 year old man, and there's this guy. His whole bit is that he um, does it in like the cadence of Drake and you know modern day rappers, but he reads Dr. Seuss books and he raps them. Oh, that's pretty it good. It sounds just like a regular rap song. I'm like, holy <laughs> shit! If you didn't tell me that's Dr. Seuss, I'm like, that sounds like rap today. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I'll I'll shoot you a link so you can watch them. They're really good. Yeah, I should check that out. It's really. I funny. like Dr. Seuss, so you know. I, yeah, it's great lyricist. Kind of like Drake too, so you know, let's party, dude. Dr. Seuss has bars. Bars. Yeah, Dr. Drake. Doctor, yes. Um, where were we? Oh, yes. <laughs> Wes Craven. Today. Wes Craven's a night, <laughs> nightmare on yeah. Elm Street. Said it right that time. We don't have to Not get nightmare. sidetracked. Nightmare. Nightmare. Uh, release date was November 16th, 1984, as we've said, directed by Wes Craven. Before this, Wes uh, had directed a couple of other uh, horror classics, some of the most, like, the OG horror films from the 70s that kind of define the genre, uh, especially in the slasher perspective. So he did The Last House on the Left, the Hills Have Eyes Part 1 and 2, and then Swamp Thing, which is more of a creature feature than like a... Creature feature. That's, yeah. a, fun, that's a fun thing to say. Yeah, anytime there's like monster movies, you call them creature features. I like it. Yeah. I like it. I, did, I won't say I made it up. <laughs> well, anyway. Uh, after this, known for, and I watched this the other day, Vampire in Brooklyn, which is an Eddie Murphy movie, which is neither funny or scary, but it tries to be both. Okay. It's, it's kind of funny. There's some funny parts. Overall, Angela Bassett's the... Um, Love interest, and she's kind of the antagonist too. Uh, okay, it's it's it it it, it could. I, West wasn't a comedic filmmaker. <laughs> okay, he, he had Eddie Murphy. He still was fucked. That being said, Eddie Murphy's had some bombs. Yeah, I, I've seen the uh, like not the preview, but fuck, I don't know. It's been recommended for me on Amazon or some shit like that. So I know it exists out there. Yeah, but if you've got a free afternoon, it's it's like ninety minutes. It's okay. it's quick, and uh, Eddie's. Eddie's funny in it, but I mean it's hard for Eddie not to be funny. 
Wes Craven also did Wes Craven's A New Nightmare, which is like a Freddy Krueger spinoff in a way. It was weird. Yeah, that's like if uh, Freddy Krueger happened in real life, right? It exactly. Was like... It takes place uh, in the like not in the Freddy universe, but in the universe where Freddy's recognized as a horror film. Right. So it's very strange. It's very meta. Yeah. Uh, then I said Scream One and Two. That movie Red Eye with Killian or Cillian Murphy and um, uh, the broad from the Notebook, Rachel McAdams. Thank I, you. I saw it in theaters. It's not very good. I remember it being pretty forgettable. Yeah. I, I remember seeing it in theaters. I think I was probably like seventh, eighth grade, whatever year it came out, and I was probably trying to, you know, make out with a girl or something at the time. That's yeah, what you used to do. You in just the movies, hung out you know? the movies. You, you yeah. saw movies you didn't want to see. Yeah, I was never actually getting with the girls, but I would always hope that, you know, maybe that I'd hold their hand and it'd turn into a little boob touch or something. I remember going to Harry Potter movies with popular kids. I hated Harry Potter, but I was like, Well, I wanna like not be popular. <laughs> yeah, I, I, well, I love I, so Harry basically, Potter. So anyway, that that what that's what it shows you know, about me and my upbringing is that I got street cred from going to Harry Potter's movie with the popular kids. <laughs> there you go, Lee Summit. What up? Ooh, yeah, from <laughs> from the hood. Yeah, straight out Lake Lattawanna. Lee Scum. Cast. Oh wait, wait, wait! I oh, want to say okay. something about uh, that, please. Because uh, I, I don't think you finished with his credits either. You, we oh. got Scream to get to. Like I man. said, Scream one and two. Oh, you did. All right. Well, anyway. And my That's soul not to what take. I wanted to talk about. But uh, one time when I was in college, we went to the Walmart there in the Maryville, and it was like Halloween time. I'm not even being a dick. There is a Walmart in Maryville? There is a Walmart okay. in Maryville. There's a Walmart and a Hy-Vee, but that's pretty much your two options for shopping. Jesus <laughs> and, Murphy. Uh, yeah, so. But Unless you're Walmart, growing your own food. Yeah, exactly, which probably half the town fucking does. Um, <laughs> but there was like those $5 movie bins, you know? Oh, yeah. And so me and my friends, the last house on the left, the remake had just came out, and we wanted to watch that. And so we looked in the five dollar bin, and there was the last house on the left. The new so we one's pretty it. fucked up. It is. Well, I have the one from the seventies is way more fucked up. Really, I haven't seen the one from the seventies. So only uh, the new one. Yeah, the people like it. First off, they don't take her to like a cabin in the woods or something. They like take her to this apartment in Brooklyn, and then they like disembowel her and start Jesus. eating your guts and shit like that. And we thought it was the new one, so like we Wes's, turned it on. That was like Wes's first movie. Yeah, too. we turned it on and we were like, "Oh shit! I guess this. I guess the new one's a remake." We didn't know that, and we watched it for like 34, 30, 40 minutes or so, and then those intestines got ripped out, and we were like, "All right, let's watch something else." So that's my touchstone. With that's that all movie. you need to see. Yeah, that's the end of that story. All right, moving on to cast. We had Heather Longenkamp as Nancy Thompson, Johnny Depp as Glenn Lance, John Saxon as Lieutenant Thompson, and then, Robert, of course, Robert Englund as uh, well, re- listed as Fred Krueger in this movie. He turned into Freddy in the second. Well, though, did they say Freddy in the movie, though? I think they mentioned Freddy once, but his his credit name, you're saying, it was Fred, Fred. Krueger, right? Yeah, they well, they said Fred Krueger a lot, but I think it turned into, like, Freddy became more of the proper uh, nomenclature for said villain in the uh, second movie on. Well, yeah, because, I mean... If you think about it, Freddy's just sounds way cooler or kind of scarier than Fred. Like, I, I, Fred. oddly enough, it does. Think about if it was Fred Mercury, Fred and, Flintstone. Yeah, well, yeah. Freddy Fr- Flintstone, I guess. Fred, yeah, I don't know. But I if it was it'll, Fred yeah. Mercury, that's not as cool as Freddy Mercury. No, you know? well, no, yeah. you're right. Freddy has, has becomes a, has a much better, uh, has a lot more flair to it. Yeah, it works. If your name's Frederick, go by Freddy or Frederick. You know, whatever. Just don't go by Fred or Drick. Drick. <laughs> Sounds like an STD. Yo, dude, my name's Frederick, but my homies call me Drick. Sounds like you go to the doctor and be like, I got I got the Drick, man. <laughs> uh, dude, you got to get shot. I got the Drick. Yeah. Ugh. Anyway. Or I guess just drop the D and go by Rick. There you go. <laughs> my, name's, my name's Frederick. I go by Drick, but I got to drop the D, so now I'm Rick. <laughs> I don't think I want to hang out with you anymore. We're going to start a new show. It's called Drick and Smarty. God damn it. We should move on. <laughs> All right, sorry. Uh, Heather Longenkamp. It's the most German last name I've ever read. Heather Meinkamp. Frau Longenkamp. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, before this, known for a television movie called Passions, and she was in The Outsiders, but her scenes were deleted. Stay gold, Heather. <laughs> Stay gold, Pony Boy. How about her teeth? Ugh, that was, we'll get to that. Those bother the fuck out of She's me. She's got some chompers. They bend outward. It's they were, very strange. They were white, at least, and everything. They, she didn't have, like, they lettuce in them the whole time. They were a couple shades but... darker than Donnie. Donnie. <laughs> than uh, Johnny. I call him Donnie. Donnie Depp. Donnie Depp. That's a way cooler name. <laughs> that's Johnny's older brother, Donnie. I'm just, <laughs> Donnie Depp. It's, there's Donnie Wahlberg, Donnie Depp. <laughs> Donnie Depp. <laughs> That's good. I like that. Uh, oh, fuck. After this, she's known for 
uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors, which also has uh, the uh, Morpheus in it. I, I saw him on the cast list. It's Morpheus? Got- oh, Lawrence Fishburne? La- Larry Fishburne. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, good for that. Yeah, you've and, come and a long way. Dream Warriors is a pretty- Really, really bad name. Yeah. It, well, it's a funny concept, I guess. I get it. I mean, I they got to fight in their dream, I guess, right? I understand that. I should have workshopped that a little more. It sounds like a film for, like, I don't know, people who wear parachute pants. <laughs> or like the Warriors, you know? Warriors! Even they were a little feminine. Come out to me! Uh, anyway. Also known for the show Growing Pains, that Kirk Cameron and Alan Thicke show. <laughs> J- Jag. That's a fun name. Alan Thicke, funny, funny name. Rest in peace. Yeah. And then she was in Star Trek Into Darkness. I didn't recognize her character's name, so it must have not have been a pivotal role. I, well, yeah, I've never seen those movies. That's the J.J. Abrams. Yeah, J.J. Abrams. I saw the first one, but... It, they're good. I, I don't think I've seen Into Darkness even, but they're good. I'm just not a big Star Trek fan. Not Trekkie. So. Yeah. No. Live long and prosper. For whatever that's worth. Yeah, Nanu Nanu and stuff. Um, Johnny Depp. Donnie Depp's <laughs> younger brother. <laughs> it's Johnny Depp, Ronnie Depp, Johnny Depp. <laughs> <laughs> uh, before this, th- he's known for nothing. This was his his first role. It said in the credits, introducing Johnny Depp. Yeah, good for him. Yeah, Af- gets sucked into a bed. After this, he's got a lot of great credits. Well, obviously, but yeah. even in his early career, like he was Platoon, had a, a mid level role, nothing big, but it wasn't a nothing role. Uh, movie Crybaby, I think, is what kind of put him on the map as like a heartthrob star. It's a stupid movie. I remember it always being on like HBO when I was like a kid in the stupid 90s. Fucking I've probably movie. seen that movie a hundred times when I was a kid. Yeah. It's like the squares and the, uh, I, I can't even He's remember the He's got that the tattooed, the tear tattooed on him. Or he cried. I don't remember. Yeah. It's, well, he gets a teardrop tattoo. It's a musical, too. It's a isn't musical. It? Yeah. 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 It, I didn't like it. They race on the top of cars or something by the end of that movie, play chicken. Yeah. Not we should me. do that on the podcast sometime. It's probably, I'll do it. It's probably pod worthy. I'll do it. All right. I'll probably have a lot to say about that. I imagine so. It'd be our first musical too. Oh, that's a good point. See? That's Sing a good along. point. Sing <laughs> along. I don't think this podcast needs any more of us singing than it already has. Welcome to the Real Buzz Sing Along. <laughs> uh, what if I just sang the rest of his credits? Edward Scissorhands, Donnie Brasco. <laughs> yeah, let's not. No, anyways, we won't do that. Uh, but Edward Scissorhands, Donnie Brasco, Sleepy Hollow, Blow, From Hell, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, uh, the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise. There's like 17. Sweeney Todd, <laughs> Public Enemies, The Lone Ranger, and um, an underrated film, in my opinion, I know you don't like it, is The Rum Diary. Yeah, I'm not a big Rum Diary fan, but uh, I like the book a lot. That's why I don't like the movie. But uh, I never read the book, so that's probably why I like the movie. Okay. Uh, but I have a funny story about From Hell. So one time, not really a funny story, but it leads me to saying something funny. It's not a very funny movie. No, it's not a funny movie. Uh, I do remember seeing that. I like that movie. I went back and watched it not too long ago. Not as good as I remember it. No, it, does, it doesn't age that great. Uh, one time my brother and I were in Mexico, and you know how they have like certain channels that'll play the English-speaking movies, but then there's oh, commercials yeah. that are still in Spanish? Yeah, but they're unedited all the time, too, which is nice. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. cool. But they, they were doing this commercial down there, and it was like, I guess in June when we were there, it was their... Uh, scary movie month so it would go oh, probably because it's uh, Dia de los Muertos is in June yeah so so they would go esta noche cine de terror Johnny Depp from John- hell in <laughs> junio cine de terror yeah, that's a pretty good that's I, a pretty good Mexican guy always, uh, voice that was, Johnny Depp uh, Johnny Depp <laughs> well I'm, I was an Italian with that yeah either way it's fun to say it like that is Johnny it, Depp's brother there's a fine line between Mexican and Italian am I right yeah it's a lot of lines a lot, a lot of countries uh anyway John Johnny Saxon Depp. John Saxon before this known for episodes of Bonanza a film Enter the Dragon. I'm 92 percent sure that's a Jet Li, uh, not Jet Li, a uh, Bruce, Bruce Lee. Lee movie. I think that. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna second you on that. Yep. Episodes of Gunsmoke. Episodes of The Six Million Dollar Man. Lots of other iconic TV from the 60s and 70s. Westerns, I guess. Bonanza and Gunsmoke. Seems like yeah, Six Million Dollar Man. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, that was really great. Just fucking <laughs> right on mic. I cleared my throat. Old man noises. If you don't come here for those, what are you coming here for? After this, he also made an appearance in the Nightmare on Elm Street Dream Warriors. Oh, yeah? Also in Beverly Hills Cop 3. He was in Wes Craven's A New Nightmare. And, Mare. Mare. <laughs> and then he was also in the um, Robert Rodriguez film from Dusk Till Dawn. Oh, really? Yeah. Who was he in that? I don't remember. Probably not, some guy at huge, the bar. Yeah. yeah. And that's a Quentin Tarantino written film, too. Yeah. And he's, then Quentin he's stars a fucked in it up too. character in that movie. He's a fucked up in, a character in all the movies he plays someone in. That's true. That's fair. Yeah, the guy who, the in Pulp Fiction, not a, not a great guy in that one. Not a great guy, yeah. 
not a great guy as Mr. Pink. Or not Mr. Pink, but Reservoir Dogs. Yeah. Talking about getting fucked. Anyway. Robert England. London, England. It's spelled E-N-G-L-U-N-D, so it's like England. 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 Before this, known for TV spots, nothing else stood out. After this, a subsequent seven additional appearances is Freddy Krueger. Uh, in seven different films, obviously. He was in the uh, film Urban Legend, Zombie Strippers, Strippers vs. Werewolves, Lake Placid, the final <laughs> chapter, and then Lake Placid vs. Anaconda. So he kind of went to that B-horror uh, B film kind of type yeah, of Yeah, he found his niche there, huh? You could argue this is a B-horror film. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, that's kind. Of, I, I think he's he's kind of like that's his that's his niche. It's kind of like, and that's probably why it's got such a cult following or whatever. But I feel like a lot of those '80s slasher movies are kind of they're pretty B yeah. style. Maybe Halloween's pretty actually well done, well, but it, Friday the Thirteenth is a piece of shit if you that's go back B. and watch that. Yeah, Halloween is I think a better piece of cinema than those other two films. Uh, I think the writing's better. I think the directing's better. I think the overall production's better, and they did it for a lot less money. Yeah. It's one of the most successful independent films of all time. It's a really good movie. It's very good. Yeah. And that's the thing. So while this movie didn't necessarily age or stand the test of time, I don't think. Like, it has ridiculously good reviews. But I watch this. The acting in this is horseshit. But if you look Except at- Except for Johnny Depp. Johnny actually is pretty good. He's actually pretty good. Uh, but if you look at Halloween, the original one um, from 78, something like that. Anyway, uh, it's fantastic. It still holds up. It's still scary. Yeah. Jamie Lee Curtis- acts but doesn't overact unlike Heather Frau Langenkamp. Yeah. I think there's parts of this movie that are still I guess they didn't scare me this time, but I can see why they were still scary. This movie scared the shit out of me the first time I saw it. Yeah, but how old were you? Uh, probably like 11. Yeah, I mean I had nightmares 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 <laughs> for fucking weeks after I saw Scream for the first time. That's not a scary movie, really. That's, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, the premise, we'll get into it. Yeah. We'll get into All right, it. All yeah. right, we'll do Networths. Two chains. All right, Frau Langenkamp. Uh, five million dollars. No, no, that's got to be too much. I th she definitely. I would, One million dollars. I would imagine the most of her net worth comes from royalties from this particular film. I don't know what, what kind of deal she got when she was negotiating the role. I don't know if she got points in the back end or if she just was like took a flat fee. Oh, she got points in the back end. If you know what I'm saying. Yeah. No. Yeah. Well, that's, that, that means, I shouldn't assume that. That means something entirely different in the, in the post Harvey Weinstein era. Yeah. I, yeah. Watch out for that. Anyway, I, I'll never think, negotiate points in the back end with Harvey, ladies. Yeah. I, I'll. I will guess she's in a range of no, one to five. Oh well, you were still closer the first time. Just one point five million. One point five. All right. Yeah. Uh. Uh. Johnny, Donnie, Ronnie Depp. Johnny, Donnie, Ronnie Depp. Well, he has. Uh, he didn't get divorced or something recently. He's lo He's got to lost some money on that. Yeah, it's still a lot though. I'll say two hundred million dollars. He's worth two hundred million, and I, I. Is it two hundred million? It is. Yeah, I would imagine his marriage to um, Amber Heard. Amber Heard probably involved a prenuptial agreement. I don't know that for a fact. Kind of well, seems I like would, it would. I would say Johnny Depp ain't no punk, so he probably hollered, we want prenup. We, we want, want prenup. prenup. Yeah. Because <laughs> when she leaves your ass, she's going to leave with half. Um, yeah, so Amber Heard is substantially younger than him and substantially less famous, especially when they got married. She's a little more well-known now. Yeah. But I would just feel like if I were her, I would be like, yo, we should get a prenup because like, I don't feel comfortable walking into this, you know, because odds are, odds are, this isn't going to work. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think it did. So no, whatever. That, no, Johnny, that would be the, I mean, think about it. It's like the worst gamble you could ever make is to be a Hollywood megastar and get married and not have a prenuptial agreement. And it's not the most romantic thing in the world, but come on, man. Be, yeah. Love is good. Love doesn't last. <laughs> yeah. Uh, real buzz love. Yeah, if you, if you want any more uh, romantic advice, my phone number is... Okay. <laughs> moving oh, on. Moving on to Specs and Deeks. Wait, what about the other two? Oh, Net fuck. Words. You're right. I'm sorry. Uh, John Saxon. Oh, $100,000. One and a half million. Ah, oh, he's hanging out with the Langenkamp, huh? In, in the Frau Langenkamp, and he, you know, maybe invested well. Because he's not making much for episodes of Bonanza, I'll tell you that. <laughs> All right, Robert Englund. He's been in this franchise. He's done what? He's seven, seven of them. He's the one consistent part about this franchise. I'll say fifty million dollars. Not quite sixteen million, but I think that's good. Sixteen? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, that's good for him. I and mean, basically, he's known for one role. Yeah. I mean, I'll take yeah. And then, then he just shows up in Anaconda, latches onto that franchise, Lake Placid. 
What's well, up with that? That's I think awesome. He has such a cult following as Freddy Krueger. Just he's so well known for playing that character that it's almost paying homage to B horror films just by having him in the film. That's true. So I think that's kind of how he gets some of his juice to be in all those B horror film films. I bet he goes to a lot of comic cons and shit like that. Too. Oh yeah, he probably charges like a hundred bucks to have a sign, like a picture taken with him. They'll sign it and shit like that. Oh yeah. They make those guys like the Red Ranger from Power Rangers made a fucking ton of movie at con- a ton of money at cons. Yeah, I think old wrestlers still do that shit too. Yeah. Hey man, you got to pay the bills. Absolutely. Net worth. We already did that. I'm sorry. Specs and deeds. Yes, indeed. And by the way, if you guys want us to come to your comic cons or whatever, just let us know. We'll we'll be there. If there's if there's any pod cons. Pod cons. Pod cons. Yeah. That's that that's catchy. It sounds kind of sexual. Hey, Ken, you going to the pod con? <laughs> uh, spe- uh, a little pod con last night. Oh, I saw Ronnie at the pod con. Uh, runtime in this movie was 91 minutes. Budget Good. was 1.8 million. It opened at 1.2 million. Grossed twenty five point five million dollars, and this oh, was back in nineteen eighty four. This movie made twelve times the amount of money it cost. Yeah, that's good. Hey, good for this movie, man. No, more than that, more than twelve. It was closer to twenty five, because one point two out of twenty five point five. Oh, I thought you said it was one point eight. One point eight is oh, I'm sorry, right? It is one point eight. So it's yeah, closer to twelve. So almost two million. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you think about a movie now, that what what movie could make twelve times its cost that could be in a movie theater? It would have to be a budget of. 15 million and it'd have to make whatever that whatever the math is there <laughs> i can't yeah you lost me once you start doing math i don't I know like, why you're trying to do that like maybe infinity war that made like a billion something dollars yeah right? but it cost 400 million well that's not true i don't know how much it costs maybe hundreds of millions to make yeah that's true that's fair well watch out for the real buzz take movie yeah i don't know why i went down the king's probably like what the fuck is he doing don't do the numbers dude <laughs> stay away from the numbers no we'll make a movie it'll cost 12 bucks to make and then we'll just fucking sell it for 144 bucks there we go Watch out. All right. Hey, there it is. Okay, I like that. Yeah, that's, yeah, right. that's, that's the basic math we're looking for. Ship it to Romania. Well, it'll double our profit. Double our profit overseas. Are you from Ireland? Because you've got my, my, my dick doubles every time I see you. Because <laughs> I'm Dublin. Because <laughs> my wieners are Dublin. Uh, taglines. There were an astounding 20 taglines written for this film. Jeepers, Christmas. I know. I wrote down four of them that I thought were, I mean, not even good necessarily, just that I thought worked. Uh, the first one is one, two, Freddy's coming for you. That works. Uh, the second one is midnight baseball bats and the boogeyman, which I didn't understand until Johnny Depp said the line. Oh, he says that line? He does. Because she's like, hey, bring something to pop him with. And I bring him out of my dream. He's like, what, do you want me to cold cock him? And she's like, maybe a bat. <laughs> and then he lands back and he says, midnight? Because he's meeting him at midnight. It's midnight baseball bats and the boogeyman. So it's just yeah, one that of his works. lines. It's one of his lines. Yeah, that works. At first, I was like, that's a horrendous tagline. <laughs> I don't even know how that is even, I don't understand the reference. Yeah, he does have that bat at one point, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah he she does. does or something. They mention a bat specifically. Yeah. I'm going to shove this bat up my ass. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you brought some KY. <laughs> yeah, that's the unrated version. <laughs> The director's cut. Yeah. It's just one extra scene thrown in the middle of Heather Long Where and Johnny Cop. Depp is, oh no, Long and Cop, he's putting in Long and Cop's ass? Yeah. No. What was Johnny Depp's name in this movie again? Oh, fuck, I don't even remember. Uh, uh, Glenn. Glenn. Oh, Glenn. Yeah. Oh, Glenn. Stick it in, Glenn. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Give me that big old Louisville slugger. Uh, the the <laughs> third one I wrote down was Meet the Glove. <laughs> Meet the Glove. <laughs> it works. It's like uh, it's like Spinal Tap, where it's like Smell the Glove. Yeah, but it's just a lady sniffing stick in the glove. Anyway, Meet the Glove. And then the uh, last one is Come to Freddy. You know, I want to open a restaurant and make a hand shaped meat patty and call it the Meat Glove. <laughs> Call it the meat claw or something yeah, like that. Meet yeah. the glove. Anyway, sorry. What was the last one? Freddy's here. Yeah, come to Freddy. Come to Freddy. Freddy's, yeah. here, Freddy's here is almost better though. Yeah. Uh plot keywords. Number one, we had yeah. slasher. Two, cult film. Three, independent film. Four, male objectification. Didn't get that one. Yeah, what? When, when is my well, whatever? Uh, oh, maybe when Johnny Depp's wearing that fucking half tee, that cutoff. It looks like it belonged to his little sister. The Ezekiel Elliott shirt. Yeah, it's cut off like right below his pecs, yeah. man. And it's not like he's not, it doesn't look bad. He's not fat, but it's not like he has any great abs he's showing either. He's a skinny little kid. Who worries about male objectification anyway? Um, I don't, not me. Yeah, whatever. Objectify me. Yeah. Bring it on. I'm good with it. 
I don't mean to disrespect women that feel like objectification is bad for them. That's not what I mean. Uh, well, that's what I'm saying. I'm yeah. saying we should focus on that, not yeah. our objectification. Yeah, objectify this big meaty dick. Forget about the ladies. <laughs> and then number five is be horror. I don't think I know what objectification means. Anyway. I mean, uh, let's not have a lesson. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> we can urban dictionary it. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, and it is now time for the Canopsis. Give us your Canopsis Cannabis Keenan. All right, so I did it a little differently uh, this week because of the Freddy nursery rhyme, the old uh, one, two, Freddy's coming oh, for did you. Did you write it in iambic pentameter? Uh, no, but I did write it in... Uh, isn't I am been, uh, That's I am the way been, Shakespeare wrote his plays. Yeah, you supposed to enunciate like every other. Yeah, anyway, uh, no, I didn't do that. I just wrote a little. It, it, was, a, it was a bad reference to. Yeah, anyways. <laughs> um. Anyway, so here we go. One, two. Here's a real buzzed review. Three, four of the first Freddy Krueger gore. Bear with me on that one. Five, six. There's bad acting from chicks. Seven. Eight, this movie's not great. Nine, ten, but I'll watch it again. That's the end. Nice, I liked it. That was good. Uh, th- there's, I mean, there's definitely a technical name for how nursery rhymes are written and the, the style they're written. I don't remember what it is, but yeah. uh, it, not that it, it's not relevant. Yeah, no, I just I copy it. They called it a uh, jump rope rhyme. I mean, yeah, or some shit like that. Yeah, I mean, they're jumping rope in this movie to it. Yeah, I used to. <laughs> I used to uh, say that to Evan. The one, two, Freddy's coming for you. It'd freak him the fuck out. Did I, he get? Did he, was he familiar with Freddy Krueger? Uh, not really. He would. He was probably like four or five, and I could just say that to him and make him fucking cry because he was a little kid, you know. I used to do something similar to my sister. Uh, I would just start talking like Hannibal Lecter, and she'd freak the fuck out. Yeah. See. Like, yeah. The lambs, Clarice. Do you still dream of the lambs? Yeah, and then like, Clarice. stop doing it, and you just keep doing it even more, you know, looking at him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I ate his kidney with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> well. I, I may have practiced it before. <laughs> uh, all right, so I guess it's time for the Real Buzz Rundown, which will be the portion of the podcast where we give our, you know, our specific takes on this movie, what we may have liked, what we may have disliked. Uh, Keenan, we'll start, with, we'll, please, start with you, and I can sprinkle in. Per usual. Anything, everything. Here we go. Um, so, uh, yeah, I saw this movie for the first time when I was like 10 or 11, rented it from Blockbuster. Back when you rented VHSs. Exactly. Yeah. And it was uh, probably around Halloween. It was like, I want to start watching scary movies, you know? See, and The thing is, Redbox seems ancient now, let alone going to Blockbuster and no shit, picking, right? picking up like a VHS in those fucking little boxes, and then they'd fine you if you didn't rewind the fucking tape. Dude, we had a thing in our living room that like automatic rewinder, Super, it, a speedy rewinder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, so I I probably written it on VHS. Maybe it was rewound. Maybe it wasn't. I can't remember that. Eh, can't what speak I, to it. What I do remember is that it scared the fucking shit out of me. And I, to this day, I think that this might be the best premise for a nightmare fueling type yeah. uh, <laughs> s- situation. Like you got a killer that only kills you when you go to sleep like that's that's fucking great for, yeah, for can't, you can't fuel. live without sleep too exactly yeah watch uh heather Longencomp. maybe that's why she's so crazy and bad at acting maybe she's actually doing a great acting job because she hasn't slept you yeah know? she's acting quite unhinged from the lack of sleep okay yeah, yeah. and from all the stay awake she's taking yeah <laughs> <laughs> which which you know in the 80s was just diets like meth it, it, yeah, it exactly. was just like with diet pills yeah a little cocaine and adderall and a pill together yeah yeah um, but yeah, so I, I do think this is a great fucking idea for a movie. Um, you know, with it being 80, made in the 80s. 84. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily age the best, but, you know, still a good idea, I think. I think Frau Longenkamp's acting is what's aged the absolute worst. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's well, and his, really bad. his little slinky arms when he's chasing after Tina and it gets all woo. But that's, g- given the budget and given what they pulled off with that puppet and, and, um, that's fair, England. I guess. It, yeah. was, it wasn't bad. Yeah. I mean, clearly 35 fucking years later, like, oh, what was that shit? Yeah. But, <laughs> that looks silly. But no, but given their budget and given the fact that they, you know, only had so much time and money to shoot, like, they, they put that together on the fly. I mean, it's not terrible. Yeah. 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 I, it, it, yeah. It just didn't age well. It's funny to go back and watch. But when it I, looks more goofy now than scary. And when I was terrified of this movie as a child, that was one of the things that my mom and dad were like, well, look how silly it looks when his arms are like that. You can just laugh at him if you get scared of him, you know? So I yeah. think that's why I 
to this day. It's a defense mechanism. Well, and also I think what speaks to why it's not as scary as it used to be is because we've come to know who Robert England is as an actor. And mm-hmm. like once you see he's almost on the comic side of uh, horror, he's he rides that fine line of like he has witty one liners in later films and he's a, has much more of a comedic tone. To some, yeah. and so it's like, oh, he's, he's a little, it's a little less threatening, you know? It's a little, it's not as scary. Yeah, absolutely. And and you can tell that they didn't have, like, in this one, he's not, he's got shades of being the fun, like, Freddy, <laughs> hey, Tina, looky here, and he yeah. cuts off his fingers. But definitely in later ones, I think they, he's got more, even they, they go fuller, deeper into that personality. Welcome to my world, bitch. Like, he starts calling people bitch all the time. Yeah. Like, he's Jesse from Breaking Bad. <laughs> Science, bitch. Son, welcome to my world, bitch. Magnets, bitch. Yeah, but anyway, and I'm excited for Freddy versus Jason because I think he they just let him go completely fucking Freddy. Oh, they movie, so. unleashed them. They're like, Eglin, just do your thing, man. Yeah. Like, the, even the writers were just like, they went all out because that's that movie's supposed to be funny. Like, it's, not, yeah. it's supposed to have elements of comedy. It's supposed to be B-horror, yeah, but, you know, bad and funny so i'm looking forward to it yeah. but uh all right so my next note here and this is this is a, sp- a specific reference see if you can follow me so do you remember the pierce brosnan james bond tomorrow never dies of course and uh there's a scene with terry hatcher like she's his ex-love or whatever Before she dies yeah yeah but then the guy that kills terry hatcher and he's in the room and he's like i'm sorry mr bond i'm such a good shot and all that stuff you yeah, know, you know, know what actor i'm talking about of course so when Tina's mom comes in, Tina's having the nightmare. Is that him? No, but it looks like him, doesn't it? That, that white trash guy is like, come <laughs> on, Tina's mom. I'm going to put it in no, your butt. I'm saying Tina's mom kind of looks like that guy. Oh, She's yeah. got the dark eyes Dude, and fucking like. They made like, everyone. Tina, stop having a nightmare, you dumb bitch. Every <laughs> adult in this film looks like such shit. Yeah. It's just, it's like every adult in this film looks like, looks like they're, like all the females in this film, Tina's mom especially, looks like she's dressed in drag. She looks like that stripper from South Park from the the peppermint, or the, it's the spear, no, the peppermint hippo. Yeah. Where she's just like, gross, she's, dance! Does? Anybody want to dance? Yeah. Tina's having a nightmare. She fucking gets her shirt ripped or whatever. For Cut your but... fingernails, Tina. Yeah. Shut up, you dumb bitch. I'm trying to beg this guy I brought home. She's got a bottle of liquor she's just carrying around. <laughs> yeah. And then the guy comes in and he's like, hey, your daughter having a nightmare or something? Get back on this dick. Come here, honey. Hey, I'm like, come on. You said I could put in your butt tonight. Like, yeah, yeah it's just, th- those, it looks like so white trash. Yeah, the adults in this movie are not very fucking good. Um, and, and I'll get to it, but fucking, uh, Nancy's mom bothers the shit out of me too, but I'll get to it later. Um, my next note is up yours with a twirling lawnmower. Up yours with a twirling lawnmower. Rod had said, su- Rod Lane. Rod was such a flash in the pan. I just, he came in so hot. And at first I was like, oh, this guy is, hel- he's such a piece of shit, but he's so funny. I love him because he's just like, ah, what are you going to do? I'm trying to fuck her. Leave me alone. Yeah, I woke up with a hot on this morning with your name on it, Tina. Hey, it's like, dude, if you ever said that, Pete, you could press charges against someone for <laughs> yeah, saying it. He's shit. like, he just saying in front of everyone, like, yeah, I woke up with a hot on this this morning had your name all over it ah. yeah. and tina does get him she's like well your name has four letters in it, and how's it gonna fit my name on it that's you know that's pretty good up yours with a twirling lawnmower which what <laughs> yeah. does that mean i yeah i don't know well actually now you say that i because i was thinking about like a weed eater that twirls around and spins i i guess it fuck i don't even know i don't know it's it's just like that i, I don't know if that was ad-libbed or if that maybe was what it, was written maybe it's those lawnmowers from like the 50s and 60s oh, that the- aren't electric that just kind of it's like powered. a circle, yeah, yeah, and it's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe it's that. I don't fucking know. We should we should Google that. Uh, but anyway, uh, so shout out to Rob Lane. Um, Great porn name. I didn't. Yeah, that is a pretty good porn name. I didn't really understand his uh, relationship with Tina though, because that first time she's like, you know, fuck Rod, I hate that guy. And then whenever she has. Uh, Glenn and Nancy over because her mom's out of town. My mom went with that guy to Vegas because she's a mega whore. Can you guys stay over because I had a nightmare? Yeah. Uh, this is my version of it, she said. No, no, that's you. pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah. But then Rod shows up and pulls a knife on Johnny Depp. Pretty much is like, fuck you guys. I'm going in the house with Tina. Hey, I heard Tina's mom isn't home. <laughs> yeah. Is it true? And they're like, no, she's home, Rod. He's like, I don't think she is. I don't believe it. I'm going to go in. I'm putting it in Tina's butt. Yep, we're going to do it, and I'm going to take the risk. If her mom's home, maybe she'll join the fun. And then Tina goes with him at first, but then she comes back to the door, and she's like, you guys aren't going to leave me here with this psycho, are you? 
I and, really am confused as to whether or not this is a consensual situation with I, Tina. Yeah. I really don't know. I, I think by the end of it, it, I think that they are a couple that's just been fighting because they have that weird sex, which you never see, but you hear. Oh, yeah. Ba- based on <laughs> based on the way Tina's <laughs> reacting, I hope to one day be as good a lover as Rod. Yeah, Rod, Rod's dick game, was, pretty strong, I guess. He was giving her the Rod, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she was, I mean, <laughs> I would, okay, so th- that being said, though, if a girl was ever that charismatic about sexy time i would probably be like all right just let, let's let's tone it down a little <laughs> let's bit. tone it down a little bit it's like, you've never had a girl you've been with be like oh your dick's just pretty average like no, it's like <laughs> I, I never you can never believe anything a girl says about you sexually or about you it's, it's, it's all bullshit like if a girl says oh you have such a big dick it's like first of all i've seen dicks i know it's not that big <laughs> that sounds like the anti-donald trump no, thing there <laughs> it's, it's very patronizing first of all <laughs> first yeah. of all i've watched porn i've seen plenty of dicks I've seen enough to know. Don't it's, patronize me. It's somewhere in, in somewhere Don't in between. Don't patronize Maybe, me. Unless you've been with a ton of really, really small dick dudes, it's pretty average. Well, I, so whatever it works for Tina and fucking Rod, the 15-year-olds, you got to figure she hasn't been, because they're supposed to be 15, apparently, None in this movie. None of them look remotely 15. No, they look like 30. Rod looks like he's fucking 40. He's about to start cash, cashing in his AARP or whatever. Dude, can we also talk about Rod for one second? Because he looks like the perfect mix between the Night Stalker, Richard Ramirez, and then also Michael Jackson. <laughs> he kind of does. He looks like a he, he looks like a guy that went to show up for a full house audition for Uncle Jesse yeah. and didn't get the fucking part. Uh, yeah, it's just he just he's got that tight lit like jacket and he's got the you know the hair, but then he also has he look he has Richard Ramirez hair and face, but then he has like Michael Jackson movements. It's very strange. <laughs> and he doesn't really have that Danny Zuko oh, type thing, but yeah. it, he kind of looks like he should, I guess. And I while they're boning, went hoo <laughs> 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 hoo, uh, but yeah, so that. Rod and Tina don't get that relationship. And then I kind of felt bad for Johnny Depp because as right before Rod and Tina go to have this weird sex, uh, I guess good sex, um, Johnny Depp tries getting a little bit from Nancy. And Nancy's like, we're not here for th- for us. We're here for them. And he's like, so now I got to sleep on the couch and not even sleep, just be fucking staying awake. At least give me a little old fashioned under the fucking blankets. You know what I'm saying? And this was after he went to such an elaborate plan to fooling his mother that he brought a boom box with sound effects <laughs> yeah. tapes with him to fool him to make him think he's at his cousin's house, which is near the airport. And I like that plan when he was like, oh, no, I got this fucking tape of airport airplane sounds. His mom's oh, fucking funny. stupid. Yeah, she's yeah. Really stupid. But, yeah, he went through all that thinking he was going to get some fucking – I did write down this joke. So it looked like there was going to be a little bit of a three-way. and so, But a I wrote – I said, these chicks are about to get DP'd, debt penetrated – it's a double penetrate. It's a, like a dip. Didn't land. Dip penetrated instead of like a double. You get it? Maybe deeply penetrated. <laughs> I don't know. Penetrate you deeply. We, we we can we can workshop. We'll it. workshop it. But anyway, yeah. So poor Johnny Depp just has to sit there and listen to them bang. Um, so yeah, go. seriously. He's just probably like, God damn it, Tina. <laughs> God damn it. Oh fuck. Um. All right. So then, where are we? That's when. So then, after one more, one more, one more thing, I want to talk about the sex scene because yeah. we didn't mention it, and I think it's important to mention one of the greatest lines in the whole movie. Uh, well, the dialogue in general in this film is terrible because you've got uh, whenever Rob first get there and pulls a knife on Johnny Depp, and he just goes, "Hey, man, I'm gonna punch your ugly lights out wherever you are." And <laughs> and then later on, after they're having sex, that crazy sex that um. Tina enjoyed so much. She goes, she just goes, Jungle Man fix Jane. And you're like, what? Oh, yeah. I forgot. Ugh. Well, and then that's kind of what made me feel like they were in a relationship because he's like, so no more fighting now, huh? Yeah, he's no more fighting. And she goes, Jungle Man fix Jane. Yeah. Jesus Christ. So I guess they do have some some past, but I, I don't some know what's going on rapport. there. Some strange rapport. I don't yeah. know what's going on there. If any girl ever said that to me, I'd be like, please don't. Yeah. Uh, fucking teen relationships in the 80s based on the movies I've seen. Pretty fucking weird. Pretty yeah. fucking weird, you know? Yeah, no argument there. Yeah. Um, but so then they get done banging. She has the dream again. This is when she gets murdered. And uh, her being tossed up, like, thrown in the corner of the room with Exorcist-ish. all the blood. ish Yeah, that scared the shit out of me as a kid. But now looking back at it, Rod's just, like, in the corner, like, <laughs> oh, What are you doing? <laughs> get down from there. What are you doing? I don't want to make him sound like some kind of a fucking <laughs> Yeah, I don't know why we're doing that either. Goomba. But, but that's that's... Yeah, well, he kind of he kind of was doing he a little bit. Of it. Yeah, what are you doing? Yeah. Uh, get out of here, guy! Uh, so then, you know, Tina, you find out her dad is uh, the cop. The, the cop. He's uh, Lieutenant 
whatever her last name is. <laughs> yeah, uh, Langenkamp. Fucking, I don't <laughs> <Yeah>. know. <laughs> <laughs> Hair long and gone. And also, I kept. I, this is how much I didn't like uh, Nancy's character. Is at the beginning, I I thought her character's name was Beth for some reason. <laughs> I kept writing her down as Beth in my notes, but I know it's Nancy anyway. Yeah, whatever. Uh, so you you see Nancy's uh, mom is also there. Kind of looks like I'm wondering if it was the same actress that played Tina's mom because Tina's mom you saw in the dark, but it kind of looked like the same lady. And yeah, she looked like a strung out Sharon Stone's mother. Very strung out, and she was probably the worst actress in this movie. Oh, I yeah, think. she was off. Well, she, between her and Longenkamp. Yeah. The, anytime it was the mother-daughter <laughs> scenes, though, where it's supposed to be like the mother comforting the daughter. She's it so just, bad. It just did not work. She was so not like the opposite of comforting. Oh, yeah. It was, oh, my God. And you're just like, what are you doing? Yeah. What are you? It's like, wait, so you know who Fred Krueger is? She's like, I should have told you about this a long time ago. It's like, what? <laughs> Come down to the basement with me, Tina. But none of this explains as to how I pulled his hat out of my dream. Yeah. And, and like you're putting up bars in the house, like that's gonna do shit. When they take when she takes her to the sleep study, at first she, she's like, I'm gonna do something more. I'm gonna get her help. And she goes to the sleep study and she's just like smoking cigarettes, watching her daughter sleep. I thought that scene was Chain really smoking funny. and then just boozing the whole time. As the as the nerdy sleep guy, we really don't know what dreams are, you know. Levels three to five. Hey, hey, why don't you hike your skirt up a little bit there? Do you gotta smoke for me too, Miss Lady? Like I felt like they banged while oh, she was falling asleep. The amount of equipment in that room did not add up to just the nodes that were on her head. There was like a room full of like what? What is all? The, it looks like there's a, like a seismograph in there. Yeah, they were landing fucking the Challenger too. Yeah, and then like as the thing goes down, it looks it's just like okay, now she's definitely dreaming. She's dreaming about like what? what? You're looking at wavelengths. How the <laughs> yeah. fuck do you know what she's dreaming about? If it'd be a nightmare, they'd look way different. Yeah, if she gets to like a seven or nine, and then it jumps up to like thirty-seven. Yeah. yeah, it's like goddamn. Yeah, anyway, so I didn't like Tina's mom. I didn't like any of the adults in this. Uh, but as Tina, so Tina and her mom go to, like, Tina's trying to go to school. I keep calling her Tina, Nancy. Yeah, well, Nancy. I, I confuse them, too, because yeah. you think Tina's going to be the main character starting out, but then it becomes Nancy, and then Tina gets murked. And I kind of like the actress that was Tina. I thought like, Tina was would have been a much better choice for Nancy. I think, I think Tina yeah. and Nancy should have swapped roles. I agree. IMO. I agree. But anyway, so Nancy and her mom. Nancy's mom's like, oh, you didn't sleep last night at all. I must have kept you up. It was a toss for the It's like, you don't share a fucking bed. Anyway, uh, sends Nancy to school. Nancy sees Rod in the bushes. And then all of a sudden, her dad is just there in the bushes, too. Well, because he's... Cause he, he used her as bait. Yeah, he was. I guess he was tailing her. She's like, I know my daughter. This, this She's going to meet up with this guy. So I'm going to tail her. And once I find I'm going to fucking arrest him. That's... <laughs> It's, it's that's definitely not. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know what I, I did. like it though. Yeah, that's that's my point. What are you fucking doing going to school anyway today, Nancy? What fucking, are what are you fucking doing over here? And you're gonna be wrong. <coughs> some kind of fucking wise guy or something over here. <coughs> that voice is hard on my vocal cords. <laughs> so yeah, everyone just hiding out in the bushes was kind of funny. And then when Rod was running away from the cops, barefoot down the street. Anyway, he uh, ran like a girl. Yeah. Well, this day and age, the cops would have shot him too, probably. But no, he's white, bro. That's true. Um, Wide enough. He's Italian. So then Nancy goes to school, and the nightmare that she has in the school, that freaked me out as a kid. Still kind of does when you oh, see Tina in the body bag. I thought and, that the scariest element of this film was Tina in the body bag talking to her. I'm like, oh, that's actually a little creepy. Yeah. And that, then, that like, got me. She's being drugged down the hallway. You just see her, like, legs lift up and nothing Blood's pull just her going, away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that still uh, is unsettling to oh, me. Oh, in 84, I'd been like, holy shit. That would have been terrified. Yeah, how do they do that? Movie magic. Uh, anyway, so then my next note is, did her mom really just say people fall asleep and drown in the tub all the time? Wouldn't you just wake up if you fell asleep? And she brings it up again later. She's like, I told you so many people die every year drowning in the tub. It didn't help that she had like a bathtub pillow in there. Who the fuck has like a blow up bathtub pillow that they lay their head on? Yeah. Who takes baths? Let's talk about this for a second. Baths are disgusting. Yeah, well, I think I'll get yeah. in a hot tub because it has a multitude of chemicals that are killing whatever is in there. In a bathtub, you're just sitting in your own filth. Yeah. Like, that's why that's why the good Lord invented the shower. I feel like that bathtub was super deep, too. Look how far down it went. Oh, yeah, man. There's a hole in that bathtub. It's not, it's dangerous to just be sitting in there. I wish you could fall asleep and drown. Also, did you feel like Freddy was uh, kind of coming up out of the tub with a little bit of some some creepiness? Oh, the, I, I think know? that was suggestive by design. Whoa, Freddy! Yeah, you know, you, you know, you can kind of um, 
you know, that 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 particular scene sends a message of eroticism and also <laughs> scary. I mean, yeah. Because yeah. it's like, oh, it's coming up between her legs. You know, oh, she's naked. She's about to get finger blasted by Edward oh, Scissorhands over here. Well, but only if she wants an abortion because those knives are sharp. That was yeah. That's probably the fucking eighties version. I don't know. Anyway, moving on. We should re- we should do this. We should make another like have this. We should do a DVD commentary of this movie where we just like <laughs> yeah, narrate see. what's really happening in our weird voices. <laughs> yeah. Do different voice. Yeah, I, I'm all for that. Uh, no one else would be, but I think that'd be awesome. That'd be pretty good. Romania might be down. What's up, Romania? Oh, Romania would love it. Yeah. Um. All right. And then I wrote down the dad just keeps me out. Don't know what that means. I think maybe I meant to say creeps me out. The lieutenant? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. He just seems like he's an absentee father altogether because all he does the entire film is getting mad at her mom for like not paying attention to what she's doing or knowing where she is. Like, dude, where the fuck are you? You're her father. Like, you you could you could take a role in your daughter's life too. Yeah, and you can't be all like you don't take anything that she says seriously. Like she's telling you what's happening to her this entire movie, and you have not believed any of it. And all he does is look at her mom and be like, "Well, what was she doing with those hoodlums?" It's like, where were you? Yeah, you're you, the fucking lieutenant. You can clearly tailor when you want to catch a perp. Yeah, you're just hiding in the bushes outside your ex-wife's house, waiting for your daughter to walk to school. That's not creepy, guy. Yeah, dude, dude, dude. But he's got a face. dude. He's got a face for film, though. He does have well, and he, I felt like they put a lot of makeup on him. I feel he's like he's still his film. He his his face is so engaging and he's got well defined features. He's great features, yeah, great to look at. And I felt like while I didn't agree with a lot of his character's choices, I felt compelled looking at him he's when he was a good looking acting. old man. He's a good looking older dude. He's pretty yeah. good. He's a pretty good actor. Yeah, um, but definitely more of a character actor than a leading man. I don't believe that you would be doing this, uh, Donner he? Yeah, he kind of reminds me of the what the uh, what's that Jimmy guy's name? Who's oh, you want the moan? Well, I'll give you the moan. Jimmy Stewart? Or, Jimmy Stewart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, oh, I mean, you see me doing this. Right, right, I'll just last one around and bring it in. Oh, I'm just, I'm just you want the stars? All right, give you the stars. Yeah, anyway, Jimmy he Stewart. He definitely had that, that black and white acting because he was from Bonanza and uh Yeah, he, he came Gunsmoke. from that old kind of overacting Jimmy yeah. Stewart days. Yeah, the, the black and white days. You want the moan? The pre-colored television. Jesus, Keenan, watch the racist bullshit. Yeah. Uh, anyway... Uh, my next note here is, uh, I'd rather not get in the furnace with you, mom. I guess that, so that's whenever she comes home, Nancy, fi- and she's finally like, I need to show you something in the basement, Nancy. By the way, hold this bottle of vodka. I, I, they got another one hidden down here. But uh, and she goes down all creepy, like in the basement, like gets in the cellar or whatever, gets in the fucking furnace and pulls out Freddy's glove, his meet the glove. She's like, meet the glove. I've got a couple of questions about that. One, why is she keeping incriminating evidence? But First of all, how'd yeah. she get the glove that they burnt the whole place down? Mommy burnt down Freddy. Don't worry anymore. So the, the police, he got off because someone signed a search warrant in the wrong place. He killed 20 kids, but because someone signed a search warrant in the wrong place, they got off. But don't worry, Mommy got him. And that's verbatim a line. Yeah. Like it's the rid- most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. So then they go and lock him in this boiler room and burn the entire place down. So one, how does she have the claws? Because they would have burnt in the fire, one would imagine. Good question. Why would she keep them? It's incriminating evidence. Uh, Three, if she's keeping them in the furnace, how they haven't burned in there? Yeah, yeah. And even if it's not incriminating, even if like the police chief was in on it and was like, you know what, fucking Nancy's mom, you did a good job. From what I understood, he was. Posse that burned down this building. You get the fucking meet the glove here. Meet the glove. Yeah, it was. It was I wouldn't want to keep the fucking glove. It was a lynch mob. Why would I? Well, no. it a memento. What am I? A serial yeah. What am killer? I going to do? Like a trophy? And if I was going to keep it, I'd fucking display it on my mantle or some shit. Like, yeah, I burned Freddy Krueger alive, motherfucker. Look, I got his glove. I understand from an exposition perspective how it makes it easier when she's explaining to her daughter who this guy was and what he was and why they did what they did. But it, it just, it, it's ridiculous that she would, she would never have kept that. It's like, uh, you remember that gator that got your hand chubs? Well, I got his eye, or I, I got, got his, his head. I got his head. <laughs> yeah. Ah! Carl Weathers. Carl Weathers, yeah. Uh, Hollow Creed, baby. <laughs> so my next, my next uh, line here is, uh, Miss Nude America is going to be on tonight, Mom. She's like, well, wait, don't you want to hear what she says? Who cares what she has to say, Mom? 
so many great elements about that scene. One is that Johnny Depp is listening to records while watching television, which is a super dope move. I also like his portable television that he's just got like for eighty four laying on his pretty cool. stomach in eighty four. Yeah, move it over to the desk. That's pretty cool. I find it interesting that he has such a comfortable relationship with his mother, where he feels comfortable sharing the fact he's going to watch Miss Nude America. I also find it strange that Miss Nude America is a thing. Yeah, that comes on at eleven thirty at and, night. And eighty four, there's like three channels, and it, it, it's all <laughs> it's Nude all like America. public. It's all like big networks. That's a good point. I, th- I have, as me at fifteen years old, and I had the fucking internet. You know, yeah. I had everything at my fingers. I'm not telling my mom. Yeah, I'm gonna be watching Miss Nude America on hey, my Rob, fucking. You're gonna be down for dinner. Just give me five more minutes. Uh, I got a good scene on the hub. I'm about to watch. Yeah. Well, how are you gonna hear what they have to say? <laughs> Who cares what they have to say? Yeah. Man. yeah. Fuck. That, that is a good point. I never even thought about that. It's pretty awkward. Pretty weird. It's basically yeah. it's basically informing your mom that you're going to be masturbating later. Yeah. No, mom, I got to jerk off before I go to bed, and I leave my headphones on so I don't have to hear you and dad having sex. <laughs> and I also leave my headphones on because I don't care what the woman's saying, only what she's got to offer. <laughs> if you had fucking had to stay tonight at Tina's last night and heard fucking Rob and Tina... Or Rod and Tina? Yeah. You'd be wearing headphones to sleep too, ma. My my balls are bluer than the Polar Express. <laughs> yeah, ma. Get out of here. Anyway, uh, so good job, Johnny Depp. That was funny. That was a funny line, though. Um, and then I wrote down, uh, Nancy's mom creeps me out more than Freddie does. She's just chug- she's Yeah, she's legitimately scarier than Her Freddy. name's Marge. Now we got to the, yeah, her name's Marge, which is pretty funny. <laughs> if, only, if only she were a truck driver. I know. But the scene where she's... Like, Nancy's waiting for her to go to bed or something, and she looks out the door, and her mom's in the fucking, like, linen closet and pulls a bottle out, bottle out just starts chugging in the fucking closet. I, I don't know. I Look, thought that was I'm going to put it out there right now. I drink way too much, especially during the pandemic. I've never once taken a bottle of liquor and just been like, fuck it. And just yeah, like, walking around your house. Just, just walking around it, carrying it with me. It's like, dude, leave me a little subtle. Pour it in a gla- like, pour in a glass. Well, and it seems like she was hiding it between some towels or something, but I don't know. Well, she could have just hit it in like a coffee mug. Yeah, and she's not hiding it throughout the rest of the movie. She's hammered the whole time, it she seems like. She literally dies with that bottle, like, laying next to her. <laughs> well, and then she, the next, then she wakes up, oh, I blacked out last night, but I don't feel like shit today. The biggest bullshit <laughs> in the world. She's like, you know what? Th- they say once you black out, that's when you've hit rock bottom it's like lady you were drinking straight from the bottle there's no fucking way this was the first time you blacked out oh yeah she, and also that's not true at all the first time you black out it's never when you hit rock bottom i don't know i remember the first time i blacked out i woke up the next day like oh what the fuck happened did you quit drinking no no i probably kept drinking the next day you know it, hair it, of the yeah, dog right you know rock bottoms when you're like fuck my life is in such shambles that i i'm not gonna drink anymore yeah yeah your liver is quitting on you and shit like that all right, let's not get too depressing. Well, that's rock bottom. Anyway, so Marge, yeah, Marge chugging the bottle in the hallway, though. That made me laugh. Um, and also, did you notice that the bottle seemed like it was cold, but she just got it out of the fucking linen closet? She got a refrigerator for that bottle in the linen closet? That's a little thing, but anyway. Sorry, I just, my fucking computer's about to die. Oh, no, save the computer, save the show. Uh, no, I agree with you, but I think that's more of like a continuity error where I think the bottle was cold, yeah. and they just put it in the closet, and then all of a sudden it was like, oh, Action. Action. Yeah. <laughs> That's Wes Craven. Yeah. Well, action. Um, Fuck it. We'll do it live. Yeah. Okay, so the next thing. So we grew up in the time of home phones, pre-cell phones. Yeah, landlines. Yeah. Landlines, yeah. So I thought it was weird that Nancy was calling Glenn's house at midnight. Well, so did, their, so did her parents. Or so did his parents. That's true, yeah, I guess. Well, they were I, up and they were hanging out. I mean, they were partying. But. Even before the call, he was like, like Glenn's dad was staring across the street at Nancy's <laughs> house like, I don't want that fucking Nancy hanging around with my Glenn anymore. Yeah, he's, he's standing out on his front porch drinking a beer, smoking a cigarette, sees her, and he's like, that fucking girl's a creep. Fuck that little girl. That fucking girl is nuts. I don't want her around my son. And then she proceeds to call him yeah. at 1140 and, and he's the like, mom, his mom is like, what do you need to talk to him about? She could have just been like, it's 11 fucking 40 at right. night. No, and no then, phone calls. Nancy has the balls to be like, it's private. Yeah, it's private. And I she would even, never say it to someone's parents. The mom even thinks about it. She's like, well, she says it's private. And then that's when the dad, you know, man of action yeah. gets in there. Give me the phone. No, Glenn's asleep. G- g- think about back in the day when we first started talking to girls back in oh like junior God. high. And you had to call her parents house. That was the most terrifying thing. Ask her. Luckily, if you were lucky, you got her mom. If you weren't, you got her dad. And you'd be like, hey, is Felicia home? Yeah. And then you'd be like, oh, who's this? And you'd be like, it's Rob. <laughs> like, sorry, who? Like, it's Rob. 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 
<laughs> if she had a brother or something that you yeah. got would suck too. Like, yeah. Uh, I was hoping Nicole was around. She told me to call her. I'm on AOL and some messenger. And I would never have, if someone, if a parent was like, well, what's this about? I would never be like, it's private. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'd rather not tell you. It's none, it's none of your fucking business. I'm touching my dick. I want to touch your daughter. Yeah. <laughs> We're trying to fuck. <laughs> it's private. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so that whole thing. And the timeline really fucking sucks at this point. So Johnny Depp's mom. Oh, it makes mom, no sense. She's up in his room talking about him jerking off at 11.36 p.m. They show the clock. And then he gets killed before midnight, I think. Oh, real time happens Faster than the timeline in this movie. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It doesn't like it. Which happens a lot in movies, I guess, but. No, normally it's the other way around. Normally, it, a lot of things happen in a small amount of time. I see what you're this saying. This is the reverse. It's the like the real time it takes shorter than the movie time did. Like, yeah. It, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, because he gets killed, I guess, around midnight. Then her dad is already. And let's talk about Johnny Depp's death. Probably the coolest death in the movie. I think that's probably what what uh, biggest budget death in the movie for sure. Yeah, and you could almost tell with the camera when the blood's shooting out that they just they had just a did room. reverse. Yeah, they yeah. did it in reverse, and that was I thought that was cool though. No, great trick good, for eighty four. Yeah, good tricks. Yeah, I mean back in eighty four, no one fucking knew that there was like you could play film in reverse. Like that wasn't like now it's every every fucking Joe Schmo is Final Cut Pro. I did not mean to rhyme three times. <laughs> Joe Schmo's got Final Cut Pro. That's pretty good. You're a poet and you didn't know it. Hey. Um, but yeah, so that whole timeline, because then she calls her dad, her dad's there when he's Johnny Depp's dead, and she's like, at 12.20, I'm going to go to bed, and in 10 minutes, I'll be asleep. You need to be there at 12.30 to get him, dad. And I don't know. that. Respectively, whole... 15 minutes in the film happens, and she's still like, there's still three minutes left. Yeah, yeah. And then she, yeah, she goes around, sets all these fucking booby traps and shit like that. Very home alone. Very home alone. Very home yeah. alone. Um, okay. And then, goddamn, uh... Her dad, she calls her dad, and she's like, I know you're across the street at 1230. You got to come over. And her dad's like, whatever. Your mom's a drunken fucking whore. I'm not listening to you. And But I'll go tell my buddy over here to watch the house. So he tells his buddy, if you see anything funny, let me know. And the guy's like, well, what, what do you mean by funny? And he goes, I don't know. Anything at all. He's that, uh, if, okay, boss. If anything happens, come and get me. Anything out of the ordinary. Yeah. Anything. Literally, anything. I, if you see fucking if she anything if a light turns on yeah. just come get me let me know and the guy's like all right i got this okay, okay boss so nancy goes through her plan she brings freddie out good for her fucking fights him or whatever breaks the window then and starts yelling hey hey i've got him here help me sets, i've got him sets the house on fire yeah and the guy goes ah everything's under control shut up you dumb bitch like, and, pretty much. And then once he realizes the house is on fire, he goes, oh, maybe I should tell the lieutenant about this. I, th I think it's time I get... Maybe this is what he meant by fun. I don't find this humorous, but maybe this is what he meant by funny. What a fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just goddamn it. After the explosions in the house. Not the first time when she breaks a window and is yelling, it, hey, hey, help me. He's literally saying, excuse me, I'm under attack. Please yeah. help. Uh, no, it's fine. Your boyfriend's dead, not you. It's your boyfriend. You're you a dumb. You go back to bed. We're still collecting bags of uh, your boyfriend upstairs. We'll be over there in a minute. <laughs> He's got a lot of blood. <laughs> this 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 has got heavy New York accent. It in this really show. has. I don't know what's going on. Uh, so anyway, uh, when the, what, what 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 state does this movie take place in? I don't even know. It, uh, I, uh, does it ever say? I don't think upstate New York. I assumed California. I think there's palm trees at some. Oh, point. Oh, there is. It is California. It's a yeah. funeral. There's definitely palm trees. Yeah. But anyway, they all fucking are New York transplants in, in our version of it. Uh, we should remake Nightmare on Am Street. <laughs> a With nightmare. just a bunch of, like, New York former mafia goombas. A Nightmare on 34th Street. Yeah, it's a Nightmare on Broadway. Yeah, there we go. Um, then I said, I say good riddance to that creepy mom, because when she died, she creeped me out the whole time. And I... Don't really know what's up with you mean the when ending. she like sunk into the abyss like yeah. tails from the crypt. She just yeah, she just goes down in that blue, whatever the blue was. Yeah, the blue light. It's never really explained what happens there. She got blue away. Hey, oh, hey, you know you look uh, you look down. You look depressed. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna buy you a drink. I'm gonna buy you a flying zombo. That'll cheer you up. Is that my blue heaven? It is. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Steve movie. Martin. Yeah. So yeah, uh, and then the end of the movie. I don't know. I like to. I, I guess I, I'm guessing Nancy got killed or something. The She's in a weird heaven hell type situation. The end of the movie is highly ambiguous. I don't know. Uh, it's so obviously the way 
this scene plays out, you've got her mom coming out acting very stranger than whatever a character normally acts. Yeah. And she's like, oh, I'm off the booze. You know, I, I, uh, I hit rock bottom. <laughs> I blacked out. I blacked out last night, like, but I'm not hung over, and, you know, life's good. It's intentionally overly sunny, so you can tell, like, okay, something's not right here. And then once the, uh, the top pops up, and it's the color of Freddy's. The top pop. The top pop. Once the convertible top pops. No, once the, the, yeah, the top the, is yeah. up on the convertible, and it's the color of Freddy's sweater. Sweater. You think, okay, is Freddy the car? And then it doesn't really tell you what happens. It just drives off. They it's just, like, yeah. you're fucked. I'm assuming that she got killed because everybody in the car is dead. Her mom, we saw get suck it, sucked into the bed. And like the last time you see her. I think everyone is dead. I think you're right. Because she's like, Freddie. I'm not afraid of you anymore, or whatever. And, and he's he like, like disappears. Yeah. yeah, and he kind of stabs her and then goes to blue. And then the next thing, she's like opening a door, and then she it cuts to her opening her front door and it being all sunny. And so, so I'm assuming she got killed there, but then she's in the third one, so I don't know. Well, yeah, but we don't know in what capacity all the characters reprise their roles in the third one. It's it, true. It could be just in like a flashback sort That's of very deal. True, yeah. I mean, it's Dream Warriors, right? So they could just appear in dreams as well. That's true. We too. Really, without the context in which we know they appear in the third film. And maybe that gives you more of an idea of what actually happened at the end of the first. That's true. Yeah, I'm, I've never seen uh, which makes me think parts what's, two through what's seven. the second one yeah, about. Exactly. <laughs> maybe that's what I'll do is go home tonight and watch all of these fucking movies. I, you go ahead. Yeah, yeah, I'll have fun with it. Enjoy that. I do want to rewatch the 2010 reboot. I think I watched it when it came out. I think it's underrated. I watched it a couple of years ago, and that whoever that actor is who plays Rorschach in Watchmen, he's really good he plays freddy in the it's terrifying yeah he's really really he's not he doesn't have that uh that wit or that kind of humor aspect that robert england brings to the part especially in later films he's just terrifying well that's good yeah because i think that's part of what makes this a cult classic is the campiness and how robert england is kind of like fuck it whatever um it, it, much like they reimagined the texas chainsaw massacre in the newer version yeah. with jessica beale i think they kind of tried to do a similar thing with a nightmare on elm street i liked that movie. i don't know if they did it as well as a texas chainsaw massacre did though that movie scared the shit out of me when i watched it, was, it came about like 2006 uh like seven three or four oh, earlier you think yeah okay yeah. yeah i saw it in theaters too yeah i, I remember it, i was thinking like i remember thinking the trailer was terrifying yeah and then in the movie holy shit yeah it scared the shit out of it me. was terrifying yeah so I, I while i don't think a nightmare on elm street the um 2010 10 version was, yeah. did as good a job of that as the texas chainsaw massacre did it's still pretty scary yeah 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 i need to watch it again i think it's free on something that i have right now so uh prime i want to say prime all right all right I think, anything else? I think I don't know that I do have much else. I you had never seen this before, right? No, uh, no, I hadn't. This is my first my first viewing. Yeah, I guess there are a couple of things. Uh, I don't think the '80s era score, uh, the the music, the background music, aged as well as some other horror film scores. Like Halloween, again, back to like Halloween, just aged so much better from a production perspective, even from a score perspective. Like that that song's iconic. Well, I think fucking I I watched Halloween or at least the beginning of it at some point in the last couple months, and I want to say it's... God, I can't think of what his name is. It, Hans Zimmer, one of the fucking composers. It's it's like... Hans Zimmer's one of the biggest ones. I mean, he's Chris Nolan's guy. If it's not him, it's the other one that's super big. Danny Elfman's pretty big? Isn't there one like John something? Probably. Yeah. Anyway, it's. It, I think it's a pretty big composer that did... Uh, who did the Star Wars ones? Oh, fuck. Yeah. I think that guy did the Halloween one. I could be wrong about that. And I'm I'm... Ashamed, I don't remember. No, 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 no. J John Carpenter did the score for Halloween. Oh, he did it himself. Yeah, the director. Yeah, really. Yep. Oh, good for him. He did a lot of scores. He was a really, really talented dude musically. Okay. So he wrote the score for Halloween. Okay. Well, there you go. Jonathan Williams. Uh, maybe. Okay. Anyway, so yeah, uh, I and I couldn't tell you what the Nightmare on Elm Street music was. So. There's not an iconic. It's just yeah. a lot of eighty synth. So I agree with you. Uh, I, I second was, that. That being said, though, I will say I was impressed by the practical makeup that was used for Freddy for 84. It looked pretty good. The only time I thought it looked bad was when um, she rips his face off. Yeah. But even then, it didn't look that bad. It no, just, for it 84, like for it probably 84, looked pretty exactly. good. Yeah. And for a budget of $1.8 million, like, it pretty good. Yeah, no, I, I'm, not, I'm, not obsessed with it, uh, obsessed. I'm not upset with any practical effects in this film. Uh, maybe... Uh, I can't. There weren't digital effects around then. I don't know. I, I, it was uh, overall for an effects. It wasn't bad. I like the sweater too, being the iconic red and green, which is like Christmas colors typically. Like, yeah, I, I like that sweater. 
they made it slightly different from every other film on from this. I can't remember what it was that was different. I read something. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Eh, what are you going to do? Uh, did, <laughs> did we already talk about Giant Depp in the midriff cutoff shirt? I think we did. You mentioned it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was. I was like, what the fuck is this? Like, yeah, that's he, what he wears he's to wearing bed a half shirt. While, while he's jerking it to you know Miss <laughs> Nude Universe or whatever. I need to come on my belly. It's actually a pretty good idea. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, uh, yeah. He's got the washboard abs. He just wipes it all off. It's good after that. Just hoses himself up. Yeah. Don't look at me, ma. Uh, I'm doing laundry <laughs> on my fucking abs. <laughs> uh, oh, we can talk about the chauvinistic part of the film. I Nancy's got a decent little side boob action there. When she's when uh, she ch- changes out of her shirt. And, yeah. You know, you can see side boob. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Pretty good, bad acting, good side boob. Maybe that's what screen like tested so well at screenings. We're like, whoa! <laughs> hey, I hate to see you go, but I love to watch it. You know, and a lot of '80s slasher. I think, I think you see some titty in uh, Halloween. You don't? Uh, there's no. Oh, you 100 percent do. No nipple in this one. Yeah, I don't think there were no nipples. No, and I, which I'm okay with. No, no, it was fine. I, I don't think that was what was missing from this movie by any means. <laughs> uh, yeah. You I, know what this movie could use? Some nipples. Tits. <laughs> like, take it from. Hey, I'm just a guy, but you know what this movie could use? <laughs> some tits oh man uh i like the fact that she definitely shit talked kruger once she got confident she goes it's on kruger <laughs> like towards the end of the movie yeah. like she's got him out from the dream world into her world and she's just like i mean he could still kill her dude she did a pretty good job home alone in that house though when she uh had oh, the door i think this was the original home alone i think the directors uh or whoever maybe the uh the set like the set designers of home alone or whoever the effects designers whoever were designing the booby traps definitely took notes from this movie yeah that little fucking fishing string that she used on the door that trapped freddy for like five minutes he was like rah, rah, he got, rah, he got rah, dogged rah. by a sledgehammer coming down yeah then like, yeah, hit fuck him right. yeah and then the explosion that was pretty good so good for her also weird that i guess her mom was she must have been fucking hammered <laughs> yeah, because be she's honest. sleeping through that whole thing there's literally gunpowder <laughs> in a light bulb. Yeah. She, it's an explosion. And her mom's like, what? I forgot that her mom was even in the house until she gets killed. Yeah. When Freddy runs she up at the She must be end. fucking hammered. Oh, Jessica. My name's Nancy, Mom. I'm going back to bed. Right. <laughs> Can you bring me some more ice? I have sex with everyone. <laughs> I'm Samantha. <laughs> Yeah, I tell you, she literally screamed for help at breaking windows. Maybe I, maybe I better go tell the LT. Yeah, maybe. I yeah. You think? Yeah, uh, I hear the right. dogs barking. Yeah, they're probably, they're probably sick of the stupid stripper voice that we're Sorry, doing. guys. The DMX convention just showed up outside. <gasps> Dog pen. Uh, all right, so you know what time it is. Bop, bop, beep, 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 beep. It's, it's time, time for Tipsy Trivia. <laughs> that was a pretty good timing. That was oh, pretty good. That wasn't bad. That was pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. All right. This is the portion of the podcast where we have five trivia-based questions from the film that we review. If Keenan gets three of the five correct, I have to shotgun, and he doesn't. If he gets less than three correct, he has to shotgun, and I don't. But inevitably, we will all end up shotgunning numero uno. Numero eins. Over under 525, how many gallons of fake blood were used producing this film? Over. It was under. It was 500. 500 gallons of fake blood. I figured for- they would have used fucking 600 on Johnny Depp's death alone. Yeah, no, I know. Like, that was that was a lot. I think that's where the majority of the fake blood was used, obviously. But it was a yeah. lot. And who, who knows how many takes they did? Uh, well, hopefully, yeah, well, I would assume they just did one. That's kind of like the, uh... No, I bet they did more than one. You think so? Yeah. It's like in Tropic Thunder where he's like, we only got one shot at this. They fucking, they fuck it up. What was that movie? He where... gave us a sign. Let's fucking go. Or it's like the movie from Red Hot, uh, America, Wet Hot American Summer where they go and destroy the infirmary and you're just like, God, I hope they only had to do that once. Oh, I'd be yeah. a bitch to clean up and reset. reset yeah, yeah that's such a... Give me the fucking... <laughs> just fucking destroying the office. I fucking love that movie. Shout out. Go. Uh, it's underappreciated. Yeah, White Hot American Summer. We did that episode. Go watch it. Yeah, it was that was our first uh, episode on YouTube. Oh yeah, so it starts like five minutes into the episode on YouTube. Yeah, right? we were know. still working we're, out we're the good kinks. To go. Yeah. Uh, number two, which of these actors was not considered for the role of Glenn, which was Johnny Depp's character? Was oh, it? Fuck. No, multiple choice. 
So which of these actors was not considered for the role of Glenn, Johnny Depp? Was it A, John Cusack, B, Brad Pitt, C, Nicolas Cage, or D, John Travolta? I'm going to say Brad Pitt. He's got to be too young. Nope. Uh, John Travolta. It was D. The other three were definitely in contention for the role. Oh! Oh! Donnie Zuko, huh? <laughs> Donnie? Danny. Danny Zuko. <laughs> <laughs> Donnie Depp. Donnie Zuko. Donnie Wahlberg. Johnny. The three Donnies. Watch Blue Bloods on CBS, <laughs> Mondays at 8. Fuck, I'm not doing good at this. Really? John Travolta? John Travolta. Brad Pitt was considered in 84? Yeah. yeah. Really? Hey. Really? When did Brad Pitt oh start doing stuff? I didn't think Brad Pitt showed up to the 90s. So no, I guess man. I just uh, think of Thelma and Louise, which was like 86. Okay. The river runs through it and shit like that. Yeah, uh, on Golden Pond. Oh, uh, what? Well, yeah, the 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 mighty fallers. The fuck, I can't remember. You know, uh, Legends of the Fall. Legends of the Fall. Thank you. Yeah. I've never seen any of these movies. Keep in mind, they're, but I know yeah. they they're out there. I know. I know he's in them. Yeah. Legend Never, of Bagger Vance. Did see that one though. He's not Brad Pitt's not in that one. He's not. Fuck no. That's Will Smith and Brad Pitt, right? No. That's oh, it's Will Matt Smith Damon. And Matt Damon. Yeah. That's Fat Damon, bro. <laughs> no, that's Jesse Plemons. Anyway, yeah, Jesse Plemons is Fat Damon. <laughs> I'm Fat Damon. Uh, number three, true or false, the words Elm Street are only said one time in the film. I don't think they're ever said, so I will say false. That is true. The words Elm Street are never spoken in the film. You know, while we're on this point real quick here. Sure. Real quick. Sure. I remember being a kid in, like, uh, elementary school, and this this friend of mine, Christian, had said that he used he's to a friend live, of ours? He's a friend of ours. We're doing the thing. Anyways, <laughs> yeah. go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> you don't like him. He's a friend of mine. Anyway, he said that uh, he used to live in, like, Kentucky or something on an Elm Street, and it was super haunted. So... We were in, like, elementary school, never even having seen this movie, and we knew that you should be afraid of Elm Streets. Yeah, it's kind of weird. It's such a regular kind of reference into horror lore that, like, yeah. Elm Street is, yeah, it's recognizable. If you see an Elm Street these days, you think of the, about this movie. So, yeah. 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 So, anyway, and that's probably, maybe that's why they chose this, because it's such a generic fucking street name. It's like when I got on a, a boat for the first time when I was in third grade, and the name was Titanic, and I was like, oh, I should I should probably be stupid. Sorry, I tried. <laughs> <laughs> this is stupid. That was really bad. Moving on. <laughs> Numa <Numerfeer>. Fear. <laughs> Number four. Over under three and a half hours, how long did it take to apply Robert Englund's Freddy makeup? Hold on one second. Hey! All right. Usually you can't hear the dogs on the audio, though. No, I know, but they'll also stop when I do that. Okay. Uh, over, under, three and a half hours for the makeup? Yeah, over, under. Under. Three hours. Three hours. So right. I think you were two two and two. Yeah. All, right, all so the, rides all on this rides one. All rides on the... But inevitably, we all end up jogging. That is true. I don't like your impression of me. <laughs> that's, no, that's not my impression of you. That's my impression of your intro, though. So like, it's an impression of me. No, but if I were to say, hey, I saw my friend Rob, I wouldn't be like, hey, my name's Rob. Blah, blah, blah. I wouldn't do that. So it's my so it's it's my podcast voice? It's your podcast voice. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. You should you should hear my voice when I DJ like and I would do announcements. Oh, it, I was way, it. it was I way it was way worse. It yeah. was way it was it was blatantly like, that's not your voice. <laughs> it's like the strip club DJ. That's kind of what I oh, do. Oh, it's exactly that's yeah. I kind of modeled it after a strip yeah. club DJ. Was Which like, is fun. I think it's fun. No, it it works. Like it, it works like when you're at live events and like pe people don't want to hear like Dude, coming up next. <laughs> hey, 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 all you foxes and coxes, come down to the siege. We got Katrina. <laughs> it's DJ Hits a Rob of the morning. So next up we've got Yeah, they like that. Shit. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, number five. True or false? Robert England was the first choice to play Freddy Krueger. Ooh, I legitimately don't fucking know this one. Uh, true. No, it was false. Uh, so Craven initially wanted like it, um, a stunt man to do the role, like you know how a stunt man would play Michael Myers, because they didn't. But Freddy Krueger was different, or, or like Leatherface. Freddy Krueger was different in that it was the one slasher villain that actually kind of had a personality. He, he, he like had lines and yeah, yeah. He, you know he, he actually had to seem terrifying so stuntmen might not be and while they they d certainly i think in later ones i i've seen random freddy krueger movies um and he he definitely does and maybe just freddy versus jason he definitely does have more personality than michael myers or fucking jason for sure well, and there's they a little don't even bit have of lines like the, yeah. they, they're they're kind of like those those very slow creepy stalkers whereas kruger's more of like a one-liner like ah hey, welcome to my world bitch you know yeah. he's kind hey, of tina cuts off his fingers and that's almost makes it more 
unsettling in a way. Like, yeah, the the speechless person that just chases you down is very scary. Yeah. But the person that's also going to say, get over here, bitch. That's kind of funny yeah, and the, scary. The person who's a character in Mortal Kombat 10. I almost want to get it just for that. I'm pretty sure Jason is in he that, is. too. Yeah. I, I'm think michael myers might be too yeah. i don't know maybe not i definitely know jason and um and freddie are so i really like the friday the 13th video game but yeah, i didn't I like jason x that much um you know i it was funny whatever but i wouldn't I, I wouldn't watch it again yeah and this movie actually scared the shit out of me when i was a kid so next week when we're doing the real buzz showdown for freddie versus jason i think i'm gonna be cheering for freddie in this movie but i don't know okay I don't know. Okay. I honestly I can't recall who Yeah, I don't I, I know that it's I saw so it, long since I've but seen it, it came out probably oh five or some shit yeah. and I couldn't tell you anything that happens in it. <clears throat> I can tell you some of the main actresses in it or actors and actresses, but we'll, we'll save it. That's next week's. That's next week's. All right, so I'm on two I got a shotgun, you got a shotgun. You're right before we do that. We'll move on to the I got a squad. You hit a work and I'm here to rob. What song is that? Welcome to what my up, world. What up, what up, check it out, what up. Yeah, fortunately we're not choppers like he is. Welcome to the bottomless pit, animalistic. I know it's hella dark in there. My world. Anyway. You know that, uh, the, you know the um, origination of hella definitely came from the bay. Oh, yeah. People from the bay say hella. Yeah. Like, now no one says it because it's fucking hack. I still say it. It's a little hack. It is a little hack, but. You know, I'm also I, I like to go around to people and say, I'm not what you would call hip. You know, that's part of my thing. So. But it's not even hack enough to be like where if you said hella is in like just a joking way, like, nah, it still didn't work. <laughs> it's still not funny. Yeah, I think I pull it off. It's kind of like when people said don't wear fedoras, but I kept doing it for like a year and a half. And people were like, no, really, Keenan, you should take it off. And I'd be like, no, but I'm pulling it off. And they'd be like, no, you really not. you weren't. You were never pulling it off. <laughs> fedora. Oh, my God. Justin Timberlake. It took Justin Timberlake to pull off a fedora. Yeah, not even fucking he really does it. No, no, he, he, right. It's my whole point. Like, yeah. He's the only one who even comes close to doing it, and he's just in fucking Timberlake. Well, it was Jason Mraz's thing. Mraz didn't pull it off. Yeah, but it was his thing, right? He was like the fedora guy. I'm Jason Mraz. I'm yours. Um, what the fuck was that Jason Mraz song that was big? Uh, that one you did. That That's him? Yeah. I'm yours? Yeah. yeah. There's no need. I fucked this up. I think I'm going to cut my lip. All right, well. Three, two. Here's to, uh, you know, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Yep. Oh boy. What up? Put up. Shut up. Put up. Put up. All right. Here. Can I it went down my butt and liver. All right. Oh, 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 shit. Yours, you're leaking as fuck. You're leaking as fuck. No, Get out of here. Don't listen to Rob. Check the tape. Check the tape, YouTube. You too. I said YouTube. YouTube. Mom's not here. All four of you that watch this. Which uh, is probably us four. <laughs> um. N- I- yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, now moving on to... Drinking Buddies. Portion of the podcast where we choose a character, not an actor, but a character from the particular film we reviewed that we would get irresponsibly drunk, shit-faced, shy hammered with. Keenan, who's your drinking buddy? Nobody's going to like this one, but I'm going to throw it out there. Okay. I'm drinking with Glenn's dad. <laughs> Give me a second. Glenn's dad. He's the oh, one that the uh, fat old guy who's smoking. The fat old guy yeah. smoking cigarettes, hanging out on his porch, judging people. The Dude. guy who you look at him and you think that guy's racist. <laughs> I, well, now you say that, I don't want to drink with. Well, him. no, I mean that, that, that's okay. Like, no, I'm not no, saying. I'm not saying that's why. I'm not saying that's why you want to drink with him. I'm just no. saying, like, that guy like from the age, like that guy's definitely said the n word three times this I year. I had never had that thought. Now I don't want him to be my drinking friend. I just tried to pick him because he's drinking like, friend. Drinking buddy. <laughs> drinking friend. That's not the name of the segment. <laughs> yeah. Drinking friend. He's one of two fucking people that drink in the movie, and it's either him or Nancy's mom, and she creeped the shit out of me, so I guess I'm drinking with the other guy that's drinking, and nobody's smoking any weed at all. So I'm going to go with Nancy's mom only because I've always had a, a fantasy about having sex with a girl who looks like she might be a dude. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, Nancy's mom would get that done for you. Yeah. like, <laughs> like she's- Tina's mom would, too. 
Uh, Nancy's mom does it a little more for me, though. She's got the more bags under the eyes, extra <laughs> fucking mascara and eyeliner. And she, I really believe she could be a man. She could be a trans woman in 84. Probably. Yeah. You, yeah. You know what? Actually, I said nobody's smoking weed in this movie, but I bet you that that fucking lieutenant, the guy the lieutenant told to. Oh, the yeah. idiot who's, maybe I should tell the lieutenant about Anything this. funny at all? Oh, yeah. Maybe I'll drink with that guy because he had to been on the hashish or something, you know? I think you just say so much stupid shit. I'd just be like, you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't want to drink with the fifteen-year-olds. I'll tell you that much right now. They're not fifteen uh, in, in the movie. We're they drinking are 15. with the characters. Well, but with fifteen-year-old guys, it's probably not a big a deal. Like you drink with Rod. Rod looks like he's twenty-five, by the way. Yeah, yeah, he does. He's probably failed out a bunch. That's why he's still there. Like, he's like a like a sixth-year senior <laughs> yeah. in high school. Still hanging out, baby. Hey. I'm going to fail this English class again. Roddy Lane's going to graduate the fourth time around. <laughs> He's the Van Wilder of that high school. Yeah, God. All right. Moving on to Rotten Tomatoes over under. I will set the critics at a 93%. Over. It's 94%. Really? 94% from the critics on this one. It was uh, kind of revolutionary. Yeah. You know? I guess it was still around the birth of slasher films. Like Halloween was the original slasher film. It's one of the big three. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It, it's one of the big three franchises that's still around and relevant and making money today. Yeah. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, Freddy, oh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Halloween. Well, Those are the big three. Throw a fourth one in there then. Because I was going to say Friday the 13th, too. I was leaving did, out Texas did, Chainsaw did, Massacre. Oh, OK. No, there's four then. Yeah. Texas Chainsaw Massacre is definitely one. Yeah. So, Leatherface, Michael Myers, It is four, Jason, though. It is and, four. Yeah. That would be the Mount Rushmore of uh, ho- Mount Rushmore of, of Slasher. Of Slasher. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so we say Mount Rushmore would be uh, Jason Voorhees, yeah. Leatherface, Freddy Krueger, and Michael Myers. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think everyone would agree with four. that. I think yeah. it's, a, it's a good consensus. Yeah. And we did all of their movies, right? Were those the four we did? We didn't do Halloween one. No, but... We, we did, did last, last year, year, but Michael Myers wasn't even in it. But yeah, Season of the Witch, worth watching, though. Pretty good. Pretty funny. Pretty funny. Very funny. Uh, Miss Grimbridge, I want to get in your panties. That's all uh, I remember about that Dr. movie. Dr. Chalice. Dr. Dr. Phallus. Dr. Phallus, yeah. yes. Uh, audience, I will set at an 82%. Well, if it was 94 for critics, I'll say over. 83%. So under. Over. It was over. You're right. Yeah, yeah you're right. Numbers. Yeah. The maths. <laughs> Uh, IMDb was a. Oh, I should. I didn't like seven point three. Close seven five. Seven five. My real buzz ranking for this film is like a six two. See, I'm gonna put it where IMDb has it is seven five because okay, I, I would say if it was a movie that came out today, it would probably be like a six two. I think Caitlin had said this when we talked to her about it, but uh, because of its because of its legend status. Yeah, George Mikan wouldn't be able to play in the NBA anywhere near that he did back in the 60s, but he's still a Hall of Famer because he's the first NBA All-Star ever. Exactly, exactly, yeah. Uh, fucking, that's such, that's a good way to point it. Yeah. yeah, so for the time it came out, for everything, and even with it not aging that well, I still, it scared the shit out of me when I was a kid. I'm sure uh, it scared, I'm sure it scared yeah. millions of people. I, I guarantee you, if you show this to a kid today, they would still be afraid. I so. mean, and Wes Craven went on to create an, a, at least one other huge franchise. That's what everyone him. should do yeah. that listens to this podcast. Go find a kid, preferably one you know. Don't, like, take a random one. Show him this <laughs> yeah, movie. Yeah, we definitely don't do that. Yeah, show him this movie, though, not, and see not if preferably. it scares the shit out of don't him. Don't do that. Yeah, don't... A kid that you know, but it doesn't have to be your kid. It could be, like, a friend's kid. I want you giving your, you know, your kids problems, but... Show show this yeah, movie to a your, kid. Don't, you, don't give your kids problems. Give yeah. other kids problems. Yeah, your friends' kids. Your babysitting over the weekend. Make them watch this movie. See if it scares them. That's all I ask. You know, it's Halloween time. Yeah. No, it's a perfect time to do it. Somebody showed me Child's Play when I was like four years old. A babysitter. That movie's never been scary. Oh, it scared the shit out of me. How old were you? Like four. Okay, that's pretty. Yeah, young. but we had fucking. That's, that's pretty young. A doll with a knife scared the bejesus out of me. Yeah, did you ever see the new, the the new version with Aubrey Plaza and Mark Hamill? No, but I want to. It's not bad. And and now that I've gone back and seen Child's Play since I've been older, I mean that movie's just kind of funny. I mean, they too. do they do the revamp where they incorporate like social media and Wi Fi and Bluetooth and all that shit to Chucky, so he's like a fucking Oh, that's pretty good. 
Yeah, no, I mean it was it, it was a it was a good idea. I and, remember, and it was executed Chucky. pretty well. And Mark Hamill did a good job uh, with the he with did the, the voice. voice. Yeah, yeah, he Mark did a good Hamill, job. Great voice actor. Oh, the best. He's yeah. a legend. He's I I would I would argue one of the best voice actors of our generation. He did the Joker. Yeah. On Batman the Animated Series. Oh, and all the video games. Yeah, well, not all of them, unfortunately. But most of them. He should do anytime there's an animated Joker voice. If Mark Hamill's not dead and you don't hire him, don't even release it. Yeah, don't don't come don't come around me. If you do that. <laughs> All right, well, on that note, <laughs> this has been another edition of Real Buzz Takes for the Real Buzz crew. Uh, Keenan, take us out. Uh, one, two, Freddy's coming for you. We are the Real Buzz crew, and we review the best of the worst for you. This concludes our broadcast day. Three, four, your mom's a whore. Five, six, she likes dicks. Oh, ho, ho.